let's see. Live. And we're live. We're live, okay. another coffee with will and i have a mysterious camera holder right now what i wanted to talk to you about on today's discussion i'm going to have a special guest here in a minute i want to share a story with you last night well here's the let me start the story with this i've been teaching uh, classical guitar to a young boy from san antonio and as we were working on the guitar he revealed to me that he was headed off to basic and I thought, wow, he's learning how to play classical guitar. And he, was, he can't take the guitar. He said he can't take the guitar with him to basic. But he gets to take it with, you know, with him on his first job. And then we can continue our lessons uh, on Skype or FaceTime. Well, as I was teaching him, I was noticing habits. Habits that start in the beginning of uh, any 10,000 10, hours, any activity, any artistic or self-development activity where he would be playing and he would berate himself and judge himself and I told him I said you know this is probably really good training for you like a big part of that basic that you're about to go through is the mental aspect of it the mental aspect of the judge inside of you and being pulled over to the dark side in a way and being pushed and pushed and pushed and like here you are, I said, at the beginning of learning how to play the guitar, and you have the opportunity to set some habits. Instead of reacting, you know, when you play something wrong, uh, you could learn to put some space between that judgment and how you respond to it. And then you can start widening that space. And I, of course, shared with him my uh, experience with uh, mindfulness and meditation, which is a practice that allows you to witness your thoughts and look in the, so that you can learn to back up. Anyway, he thought that was really helpful uh, in going into basic. Well, then last night I stumbled upon a video of actual uh, young people and young men and women uh, traveling on a bus going into basic training, and it was so fascinating to me. I, I felt like I was along for the journey, and, and, I, and a part of me was I was envious of these, these soldiers, like, wow, they're coming together in this incredible activity where as a group, as a community, they're going to learn to work together as a team in a way that they're each going to depend on each other for their lives, they're, as if their lives depended on it. And then I thought, how wonderful that must be to be in a group of folks mm -hmm. where every, you've got it all worked out for you, the whole system, how to be, we're talking probably a thousand years of military technology on how to communicate the most efficiently as, as a group. You know, obviously, it's the goal is to either defend or kill people in some cases, like very efficiently, um, or save people or help people. You know, we've got the. I'm going to bring in somebody here that uh, is now working for me, not yet, but <laughs> uh, who's interning with me. And I found out that he has, actually was in the military for ten years. So anyway, I had a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of envy that I never got to have that experience of being in basic training, and what a it's almost there's a lot in common with what artists go through and playing in bands and but I also was thinking if everybody had that experience of the ultimate like putting your life on the line like being in community and being a team where your life depends on it what would that feel like you know we are so isolated now it's everybody for themselves and or at least that's what it feels like in a lot of ways I don't I shouldn't say black and white I'm sorry there are, there are churches out there, there are community organizations, friends, friend groups um, that are that get together and do aspects of what people in the military uh, might experience. But that long term, like going through basic, which is, what is that, 10 weeks? Or is it, how long is basic training? It, it was six at one time. For you, I, it's now 10, it's, right? I think it's probably more now. Yeah, yeah. but that whole, that whole warrior um, 
training, you know, it, oh, wow, you know, and I thought, what if our musicians did that? What if all the musicians in a band treated the music and the art as if their lives depended on it? What would the music sound like if there were no excuses given? I mean, if you're in basic training or in the army, there's no excuses. I could be wrong, but I, I mean, I guess it depends on where, if you're in combat, maybe that's what I'm saying more. If you're in combat, if you make an excuse, if you make a, an error in the details, it could cost your life or somebody else's life. I, mean, I, go, I, could, I wanna go on and on about that. But what can we learn from this to bring to our lives? And think of the folks that are in basic training right now that are giving their lives for service. And if we think about that, how can we bring some of that? That's what I wanna have with these talks. I wanna inspire people, and I want to meet, you to meet people that I know uh, that are in these paradigms, and how can we share some of these paradigms to make our lives better, more rich, for the hours that we are here. And so I was bringing it to, to, to thinking, like, how could I apply this as a leader with the musicians I work with, the music that I'm making? How could I not use excuses? Like, how many areas of my life am I using excuses? Now, of course, this is a balance. You know, we can push ourselves to the point where we have anxiety and high blood pressure, and, it's, and it goes to the other side of that. But if we examine, if we just stay aware, you know, how many areas in your life? And so I was looking at that last night thinking, you know what, Will? You're going to get up tomorrow morning. You're going to get there early to the session with, <laughs> with Patrick and, you know, get, get things ready so everything can float easily. And then we have the rain <laughs> that canceled the session. But I want to bring Patrick over here. Um, for those of you that just tuned in, you can watch this at the beginning. Uh, there's some links in there to our shows. If you want to be a tag team member, if you're interested in what we do, with charity in Austin, stringsattachedcares.org. Uh, if you'd like to come on and be interviewed in one of these Coffee with Will sessions, I'm really interested in that. But for about 18 years, I've had interns. What, I, it's, it's, it's a, what I've been doing is it's a great exchange between folks that want to learn something, and then I also benefit because I get some things done that might not have otherwise been done. And the way this is related to how I started this talk, again, is the idea of people working together as, as, as a team and the sum of the parts being greater, you know, that, that saying, right? So with this internship program that I've had for 18 years, I'd say about half of those 18 years, not, I've had always had an intern or more than one intern available. And I feel extremely lucky to have this friend, this fellow brother working with me on uh, expanding our recordings, going in the studio and recording more music to send out to the world. And so I want to bring over Patrick, who's my new assistant intern, and he's going to sit right here. Are we in there? And see how he responds. Now, Patrick, is, Patrick spent 10 years in the military and decided to move on to another career, follow his passions. He wasn't able to find, correct me if I'm wrong, an outlet for what he really wanted to do in the military. But did anything I say about that, the military state of mind, the, the, the process of learning to be in a tightly knit unit where you guys are, did any of that resonate? Was I right on any of that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. curious. And how did that feel? Right, right on the money there. Right. Um, yeah, it's, you know, a lot about teamwork and camaraderie and um, just, you know, being able to work cohesively as a team. And that's what you're taught right, right when you go into basic training from day one. You know, they, they kind of recondition your thought process and... Uh, you learn a lot about time management, accountability. Wow. And, accountability. Yeah. Awesome. It, it's, um, it was, it, it actually changed my life. I believe it. Yeah, I, I, it really when I did. saw this video, the, the folks coming in, it's like yeah. there's a line of demarcation. Like when, they, when the drill sergeant comes on the bus, that's the first. And I could just feel it in the room. Those young people, they were serious. They're like, we're going to make this happen. Okay. Like, you know. And they responded all in unison, yes, drill sergeant, you know, like, and they begin to learn the whole process, like you said, the default mode. And I was, it was like goosebumps. I mean, I was just like, in a way, you know, like, I want to be doing that. That's awesome. That's so cool to be tested, to have somebody in your face, you know, like yeah. screaming at you or whatever, and knowing that, again, it's like a meditation, like you, that's actually an illusion. If somebody's screaming at you, could literally, you could ignore it or, or you could, but then at the same time, if you start smiling, they'll notice that. Right. So it, yeah. it's like this level of focus of being in the present that you're being called into. It's similar to performing, you know, except you've got a guy there, you know, yeah. calling you accountable at every second. Down now, you know, I want 
straight back and you know yeah it was like he's this put you, he's put loved you under pressure i know? love to see how you yeah. handle that pressure and then some people yeah. you know for me i was thinking like oh that would be awesome i'd so love to yeah. be pushed like that you know it would, it would feel amazing you know but other people would collapse under that oh, yeah. yeah yeah some people did some people, yeah even yeah. in the beginning right yeah yeah, yeah. How did you handle it? I mean, was that like that when you rolled in there the first day? I, Do you remember? Yeah, tell me what you remember. Like that when you rolled in there, it like the old Patrick was disappearing. That's what I mean, they make yeah. that clear. You are being erased yeah. for the next six weeks. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Uh, well, my my dad was in the military, so he kind of gave me a little insight on on how to kind of you know play the game and you know okay, do good. do what you're told. You know, pay attention to detail. And uh, and you'll be mm, fine, right? You know, and just got to learn how to work under pressure. And uh, it's a shock, you know. I'm not gonna lie, you know. You, you know. How old were you when you went in? I was 19. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> very young. So I love it. I dro okay. I'd already dropped out of college, had no direction. So this was like, uh, you know, yeah, perfect uh, for me. So, um, but and then right out out of basic, then you they send you to school, and then you start doing your you know, academic training. Uh, I did aircraft electrical work, and so they start. You start learning about you know, electronics and aircraft uh, systems. So, um, is there something from the basic that where you felt like it was a real turning point for you in that process? Like, you know, was it a physical thing, staying out all night, or do you remember a, like a real quick story? Anybody could bring to mind right now? That was over. This was over 25 years ago. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. long, yeah. long time ago. I um, want to hear. I want to hear the good. I want to hear some of the good stuff. I want to, if you wouldn't mind sharing, if you don't want to, that's well. Fine. I mean, uh, let's see. We ran a lot. We did a lot of marching. Um, okay. I would say, I would uh, say right around the uh, maybe fourth week. You know, because you know you, you you can't get anything right up, yeah. up until just like no way. There's yeah. just no way right. because you know you've got to get all the procedures and processes down. But right around the fourth week, you know, out of out of week or six weeks right around the fourth week we just synced up the whole group the whole group I love and it. it and it was like 30 you feel good yeah oh it felt great it was so, like ecstatic almost. oh yeah 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 and everyone had their own details to do and we just it was just one giant team so good and it was great and then we got rewarded you know you start getting they started slacking off and the drill instructors started showing up lesser and lesser because you were running it yeah and then one of us you know got put in charge and then they divided the structure, so it was all a, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ranking yeah. structure within our group, and we pretty much handled our own. That's so great. Yeah, I like to say um, it's a similar feeling with certain casts of musicians that I like to work with. When when we're together on stage, and stage is a sort of battle in a way because you're battling your mental stuff, you know, and you're battling. Maybe you're not battling, but you know there's a game to it. Let's put it that way. But if you have your A team players there, the folks that you have worked with over the years, there's it's very comfortable, and so you take more risks, or you feel risky, or you you know you you disappear more into the moment. Your ego has the opportunity. There's the opportunity for your ego to fall away uh, in those live situations with certain bad. But then a lot of people don't understand this. You know, like um, why. I or other musicians don't like playing a lot of gigs with pickup players. It's you know it's fine we can do it, and we can throw a band together of you know great musicians, but it's musically not going to be as pleasing when it's just a mix of people that haven't played together. Usually now that if it's a smaller group of trio, and and that may be the case in the military. You could fly to another base as long as they were trained and the, there's a certain common knowledge, right? Right, being able to be in sync. That's the point of it. Yeah. And that's what musicians are taught. You bring your team with you. And that's yeah. what we did when we okay. went, went deployed places. We always mm -hmm. had a team of people to work on aircraft uh, that I knew see. that aircraft. Oh, wow. You could bring in other people, but exactly like you said, it, it, you may not get the results. Right. And, and it's forward. not as seamless and doesn't, there's just like, and you, there's less anxiety because like you know you can count on that keyboard player, that bass player who knows what to do. Yeah. So I have a gig coming up this this, uh, this weekend, looks like that, where it's just a bunch of different people I haven't played together before, and it's just not as much fun uh, because it's going to be a little on the edge. There isn't that familiar familiarity. I like familiarity. I like people to yeah. have a certain amount of the known, especially when lives are at stake or, <laughs> or when art's at stake.
Right. So uh, thanks for coming on the camera. Um, and how have you enjoyed the internship so far? Oh, the might be good. I know? love it. You love it. I love yeah. it. This is great. What this are some is... of the high points? Uh, I, I love working with you as a musician. Thanks. You're a brilliant musician, and I I love recording pretty much any instrument that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm hoping that I can, you know, use the software uh, to the best of my ability to, to capture, you know, your essence. That Thanks. to me is right there. That's why I'm here. Cool. So, thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick's got to go okay. to the appointment. So, yep. take care. All right. I'll, I'll see you soon. Patrick. Yes. Thanks, guys. Okay. okay, guys. So we're live this Friday. At are we still on? We're live this Friday of Songs of Billy Joel at the Townsend. Two shows, 7 and 9.30. And there's a lot of links in the description here. If you want to become a tag team member, that's somebody that will uh, say, hey, go ahead and tag me in posts and videos and things like that from time to time. I want to help out. I want to help get the word out about Strings Attached. StringsAttachedCares.org. We uh, go visit the Helping Hound Home for Children every Thursday where I teach uh, basic guitar lessons. And thanks to one of my patrons uh, for setting that up. That's every Thursday. Uh, your donations help that program as well as our visit to Legacy Oaks uh, Assisted Living Care every Friday where we play for folks in their 80s, 90s, and 100s. And it's so great bringing community to those folks. So I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear ideas about people to interview, people or topics to talk about. And I am off to have a lunch break. Thanks for watching. Tune in again. Will Taylor and Strings Attached, stringsattached.org for all our shows. Thanks for watching.